just take a peek at your uh, license, registration, and insurance. These may look like simple traffic stops, but they're not. Is there, is there any large amounts of cash in the vehicle? There's nothing. Okay. Uh, would it be okay if I did a quick search of the vehicle and uh, just make sure there's nothing in there? For what reason? Well, it's just part of what we do out here. These officers are on the hunt for cash and drugs. More and more, police across the nation's highways are focused on seizing money using an extraordinarily powerful legal tool known as civil forfeiture. I'm not going to explain that to you. I'm not going to explain, explain that to you, but I am going to put my drug dog on that if my dog alerts from seizing the money. The law was created as a way to better fight drug cartels and terror financing networks. But a Washington Post investigation has found that caught up in the net of seizures are tens of thousands of citizens who had to forfeit their money without so much as criminal charges or search warrants. I knew something was wrong from the beginning they pulled me over. That was literally the second thing, second question that he asked me, was how much cash am I traveling with? It started out as a way to take money from big criminals, and then what it's used as now is a way to pull over the average Joe and rob him on the street. Everybody is in on this. This is a slush fund for law enforcement. I have to get to the U.S. Bank before 5 o'clock to find out exactly how much currency is there, but there's five stacks that you're letting go. Smoking Roosters Barbecue Pit and Caribbean Cuisines is now open. We serve delicious pulled pork barbecue, barbecue ribs, marinated. We used to have a sign right over there with our logo, the Smoking Roosters. Mandrell Stewart's barbecue restaurant in Stanton, Virginia was more than a living. It was validation he was on the right track. After a series of run-ins with the law as a young man, including a three-month stint in jail for marijuana, he sold barbecue chicken on the streets until he could afford to open up his own shop. There, I felt like I had a chance. People liked what I was, they liked my food. They kept coming back, so I was being rewarded by the people, basically. This is the first logo that we ever made for our business. While his restaurant was flourishing, he got into tax trouble and operated in cash while he settled the dispute. This became a problem one night in August 2012, when Stewart and a girlfriend headed to D.C. to buy equipment and supplies for the restaurant in cash. And got pulled over in Fairfax. The officer said my window tent was uh, too dark. As the officer approached the vehicle, he also noticed the DVD of Flashdance playing in view of the driver, a minor moving violation in Virginia. The officer started asking a lot of questions of Stewart and his friend. Police became suspicious when the stories didn't line up, so they called in a canine unit. The dog alerted on the car, and the officers gave Stewart a choice. We either can let you off at the top of the exit, and you can find your own way home, or you can voluntarily come with us, we'll check the vehicle, if there's nothing in the vehicle, you and the vehicle can leave. Sir, can you come in here for a second? I'm two and a half hours away, so of course I have to go with the police officer to check my vehicle. Back in the station, the Fairfax police continued to question Stewart. They searched his car where they found a bag of cash containing $17,000 $550 and a few flakes of marijuana. They also went through his cell phone looking for incriminating text messages. Stewart tried to explain that he was on his way to buy supplies for the smoking rooster, but still, they didn't believe him. They could have charged him with a, a marijuana possession based on the like three flakes that they found, but that would have required them to go through all of that, and at the end they would have ended up with a conviction for possession, which wouldn't support a forfeiture. What did they charge you with? Nothing. I didn't get charged with, with anything. Uh, having a TV in a view of a driver, I did get a charge with that. And that was only a $20 fine. Although police didn't charge Stewart with a drug crime, they did take his money based on the suspicion that it was connected to drug trafficking, $17,550. Fairfax County Police Officer Kevin Pleasy did not return calls seeking comment. Police spokesman Don Goddard said that Pleasy is highly trained and dedicated. Goddard said civil asset forfeitures and highway interdiction are powerful tools for combating crime as long as they are properly used. 
Quote, there is absolutely the potential for misuse and abuse, he said. Fairfax County absolutely would not tolerate misuse and abuse. To me, it's like when they pulled me over, they already knew what they wanted. The officer seized the money using civil forfeiture laws that were expanded in the 1980s to fight major drug cartels. The idea was to give law enforcement the authority to cripple drug networks by confiscating property and cash without having to prove they committed a crime. After 9-11, growing numbers of police were trained to use cash seizures as tools against drugs and terror financing. The amount seized rose sharply, more than 50% from 2003 to 2007. But swept up in the seizures were the criminal and innocent alike. Fighting these seizures can be a mind-boggling and costly process. Under civil forfeiture laws, your property is guilty until you prove it innocent. So where does this money go? Often to the U.S. Justice Department, where the federal government keeps at least 20%, and the rest gets sent back to the local department that made the seizure. Proponents say the system works. It rewards police for fighting crime. Critics, on the other hand, say that it's well known the money creates a perverse incentive to target cash instead of crime. The Washington Post found that since September 2001, $2.5 billion in cash has been seized from nearly 62,000 people without a warrant or indictment. So this is the receipt that I was given when they took my money. In 2011, Matt Lee was struggling to find a job after getting laid off. He finally got an interview in California, which meant a cross-country move from Michigan. His father gave him $2,400 for the move out west, money that would eventually be confiscated by officers in Humboldt County, Nevada, under state asset forfeiture laws. The stop happened somewhere right in between, right in this little nook. Not a city for a really long ways. How much is in each stack? Lee was pulled over by this man, Deputy L.A. Dove. Here he is pulling over another driver in 2013. He came up to my passenger side window, uh, I gave him my license and registration, and then as he was looking at that information, he asked me how much money I was traveling with. That question was jarring to Lee, who, aside from two speeding tickets, has never been in trouble with the law. At first, he wasn't forthcoming, but Deputy Dove pressed him. He said he only cared about amounts greater than $10,000. So Lee told him about the money his dad gave him, which he kept in the trunk. He, he told me to turn on my air vents on high and roll up my windows and get out of the car because he was going to run a canine around it. He ended up circling my car three times with the dog, and the dog really didn't do anything other than stare at him. And then he put the dog back in his car, and then he proceeded to tell me he was going to search my car, and then he searched my car. Dove didn't find drugs, but he did find the $2,400. He said, no, I'm going to keep the money because I've concluded through my investigation here that you are traveling from Michigan to California to purchase drugs. I was given the option of letting him take my cash and driving away and forgetting about it, or following him back to the station to dispute it, and possibly being arrested for intent to sell. In the end, Deputy Dove took Lee's money without filing any charges. The Humboldt County Sheriff's Office did not respond to several requests to discuss Officer Dove's seizure. A minor traffic stop leading to a dog search, the threat of arrest and seizure of cash, all of it with no evidence that a crime has occurred. Lee and Stewart tell similar stories. That might be because the officers involved were trained by two prominent private police training firms specializing in asset seizure, Desert Snow and the 420 Group. Both firms disclaim a particular focus on cash, saying their training has led to the apprehension of smugglers, the seizure of drug money, and improved safety on highways. The groups have received millions in federal contracts and millions more in registration fees paid with seized cash. Training is one of the permitted uses for confiscated money. Desert Snow officials say their training follows all laws and has made America's highways safer while hurting criminal organizations. Desert Snow's founder, Joe David, has called his company's instruction the Rolls-Royce of Highway Interdiction Training Programs, simply the finest highway interdiction training in the country, bar none. Most people understand the, uh, the idea of criminal forfeiture. You don't want the bad guys profiting from their Ill illegal activities. But when you tell the average American that the government can take your property, regardless of whether or not you've been convicted or even arrested for a crime, most people can't believe it. But it is occurring every single day throughout the country. Rarely are these cases challenged through the civil legal process, in part because the considerable expenses of hiring a lawyer. And that is a huge club that governments have against 
property owners is they know that most people can't afford a legal fight over this, so they will uh, get them oftentimes to settle, and most property owners have to do so even though they've done nothing wrong, so the government will keep 50%, maybe they'll give 50% back to the, to the property owner, and the government's still getting something. Both Lee and Stewart got lucky. They found lawyers willing to work for less. Lee ended up finding a lawyer already challenging another seizure Dove made, shown in this video, for $50,000. Both the man in this video and Lee won their money back, but after attorney fees, Lee still only ended up with half his money, more than a year later. As for Stewart. The only reason he was able to get a lawyer is because I was six months in the bar. Like I was just doing court appointed cases, I had a little extra time, uh, I had no idea what I was getting into. Stewart turned down a settlement offer for 50% and his lawyer asked for a jury review. It took the jury less than 35 minutes to deliberate. They awarded Stewart his money plus another $11,000 for legal fees. Get on down to smoking rooster barbecue pit. But it was too late for the smoking rooster. Without the $17,550, Stewart did not have enough capital to keep his restaurant open. And it made me feel good that I won. But in the end, it's like I already had lost everything by then. 